Welcome to our weekly Friday Talk and Tour series when we share the opportunity to visit the studios of our wonderful artists and hear about their works and inspiration. These visits are brought to you by the Duncan McClellan Gallery and the DMG School Project of St. Petersburg, Florida. Thank you for joining us. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's great to see you. Um, uh, thank you for joining us again this week. Um, uh, lots going on in every hi, uh, everybody's lives. Um, and I hope uh, for the ones that are in Florida, you are having a wonderful day in St. Pete. It's nice and cool and beautiful. Um, today, we really have an interesting uh, show that um, I think you'll really appreciate the technique. Uh, something that some of us know something about. Uh, I know there was a big craze back in the uh, 50s in doing uh, enameling. But uh, our guest today has really taken it to a whole new form, uh, utilizing some wonderful techniques, uh, Cynthia Miller. So we're really honored to have you, Cynthia, and thank you for being here today. Uh, I wanna thank uh, my team for putting all this together. And um, I'm gonna ask Mary, take it away. Thanks, Duncan. Um, we're so happy to have Cynthia with us today. Cynthia has an extensive background in the arts. Uh, she received her degree from the Art Institute of Chicago and has been uh, practicing in visual arts in theater uh, for many years. Her enamel work um, has been uh, collected and used in public installations and private installations throughout the country. And we're going to hear a little bit about uh, her process, her inspiration. And uh, Cynthia, if you wanna say hello, but first I want to uh, give some housekeeping. Uh, if you want to see the speaker, it's best to choose speaker view in the up, usually in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, there's a view button. And if you choose speaker view, you'll see uh, the person speaking, which will be Cynthia for the most part. Um, also, uh, place yourself on mute. We're going to ask if you have questions or comments to put them in the chat button. There's a little chat button at the bottom of your screen and we'll forward those to Cynthia um, as appropriate. So again, uh, welcome Cynthia. And I'll be sharing my screen and Cynthia, you'll get to introduce yourself and uh, okay. you know, talk oh, about your work to our guests. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mary. And thank you, Mary and Duncan, for inviting me here today as this is quite a thrill for me to be doing this with you. And I so appreciate your hosting this meeting and welcome everybody who's taken time from your busy schedule to learn a little bit about my passion, which is glass kill fused onto burnished copper otherwise known as copper enameling, uh, which is an ancient technique. The Egyptians were using it way far back. And uh, I had the joy of seeing pieces at the Art Institute on a field trip when I uh, was in elementary school. I saw a beautiful golden ruby red bowl. And at that time I decided that's what I want to do. I'm going but to share the screen right now and um, we'll see images of the work as it progressed. So bear with me. Thank you, Mary. Sure. Yeah. I was uh, born in Muncie, Indiana. Whoops. This is the piece that just came back from uh, San Salvador from the Embassy, the American Embassy in San, in uh, San Salvador. As you can see, it's bright and and I expect it's not going to be on your walls terribly long because you've sold a number of my sunsets already. So, and this this is a piece. As I said, I started enameling when I was in college. My high school did not 
have an art department. So it was with a real guts ball that I signed up as an art student at the University of Illinois. And yeah, I managed to get through that first year. But uh, the second year I went down to Navy Pier back in Chicago and loved being at the pier with going out a mile into Lake Michigan. But the pier did not have any um, studio classes. So I needed to pick up a couple and I went to the Art Institute and took an enamel class with Richard Loving, who was a real um, giant at that time. And this, what you're seeing now, is some, is some early work. Uh, as you see, most of it is bowls. But I had started, if you look at the lower left and the upper right corners, I had started doing panels early on. And people have asked me, how do you have all those panels connected? How can you do that? Because they're all different pieces. And my solution has been to take a drawing or a photograph, as I did here, and to design by dividing the panels, the, uh, the pieces, let's try it again, by dividing the individual peaks into the number of panels that mm -hmm. I want to do in the composition. And these, these are the lines that do that. Then we get started with um, enameling itself. Done. Now, the first thing I need to do is to scour every piece of copper. Hi. Yeah. Excuse me, could we, okay. I'm, Make sorry, sure every, I'm just making sure everybody has muted themselves. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, not at all. You're welcome to interrupt. Um, I have to start with shiningly clean copper. If there's any oil or dirt on the copper, the enamel will not stick. So I clean both sides carefully, thoroughly and then can put the first layer of copper of um, enamel, which is glass that has been pulverized into a, a powder. As you can see on the, on the picture here, I have a sieve, a little sieve, and I'm dusting at this point, I, I'm dusting purple onto the composition, but the first layer is clear. And the reason that I use the clear first is the light comes in, goes through the clear, hits the copper, and sparkles back up so that the transparent colors of copper really shimmer in the light and sparkle in the light. This is perhaps the third firing that I am doing. And um, the part that has opaque enamel is has just been dusted. Each piece, as I had said, is put into the kill individually and fired individually. And then I put more copper onto the composition, as you'll see in the next. This is almost done. I've put uh, the jewels that you can see, the little dots that you can see, but the colors are still muted. So one more firing and here we, I'm putting it back in the kill. Then when I take it out of the kill, I weigh each panel down with a kill shelf ceramic to help on the um, warping process to, to diminish as much warping as I can. I will say that the more often a piece is fired, the more warpage there will be. And I tend to think of that as adding energy to the piece. And, and that's what we do. This is the completed piece of that quartet. This is a sunset quartet. And it's great fun. 
Now, to, Cynthia, to how many uh, layers w do you think would be on a piece like this and how many firings? I would think that there are something like six or seven layers and firing on this piece, Mary. And I believe that Duncan was wondering also, is there an annealing process? When you blow a piece of glass, you know, it has to be annealed overnight or more. Is that I the remember, case with this? I remember uh, Duncan had asked that. The answer for enameling is no. Uh, the piece is weighted down with the kill shelf, but as soon as it is cool, I can work on it again. So in that regard, the enameling process is different than blowing glass, okay? Now, the previous piece was very colorful, which I love to do. But somebody asked for something quiet, something peaceful. And I call this piece rain. Actually, I had a client who bought a six panel rain and then called and said, can you make that a 12 panel rain, please? And the answer is yes, I could. By looking at what having him send back the six that he had, add six more pieces. So there's a tremendous amount of flexibility on what I can do. And of course, there's no limit to the number of panels that I can have for any given composition. And the next one is an image. This was done for the Cincinnati Children's Hospital. I did this for the Children's Hospital to examine and convey a sense of hope, a sense of a new day is what I call this piece. A sense of the, of the new day for the, the children who are in the hospital and for the people, their loved ones who are coming in to visit with these little kids, a new yeah. day. Now, Cynthia, in a piece like this, if you have created the color, it's gone through firings, and you feel that it, you want to add just a little more joie de vivre to the uh, composition, um, is that all left up to chance? For instance, this, this beautiful um, you know, explosion of light in the upper left-hand corner, or do you know that you're actually going to get that, or does that... Um, Oh, uh, that, that is, is not by chance at all. Thank you, Mary. What I've done in that corner is to um, sift out white, opaque white, and then take a um, paintbrush and streak it so that there is a composition there. It's, it didn't just happen that way and then putting the additional um, jewels, the yellow jewels, makes it more like a, a sun, sun salutation. Sunburst, yeah. Sunburst, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I had a client who said, I really like this composition, but I want the piece for the dining room, which is wide and narrow. So can you take this these colors and say make up this of course is 12 panels to, and make a 14 panel piece out of it can you do that and i said sure so this is what i did the next yes this is for his dining room he calls it um uh sonic no i'll come up with it for a minute but i used all the all the pieces that i had had and reconfigured just a little bit so that the transition was smooth and added two more panels to it. Cosmic vision is what he calls it. And this is just outside of uh, Washington, DC. And the next, oh, okay. I had a client who brought me this swatch of fabric, actually a designer who has a client who had chosen this fabric for her bedspread. And she said, okay, what can you do me that's maybe nine panels of vertical? And so I translated this fabric into this next one. 
which is, um, she was very pleased with it. I was delighted. Now the black is opaque, but the um, other colors are transparent colors. And what that means is that by layering, say, if I have the orange and I want it to be a more red to go with her sample, I could sift in the next, in the next firing, I could sift some red on top of the orange. It would blend in the kill and come out this red orange that we see. So you don't mix colors like a painter would mix it. Uh, you layer them one over the other. That's exactly right, Mary. Yes, thank okay. you. And how do you get the uh, the patterns, um, the patterns of the color? Do you do you use an air? Do you how do you move the the? Uh, well, as I had mentioned with the other one, sometimes I'll use a brush, and 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 move the enamel around with that. And sometimes if I want a real clean kind of line, I'll take my thumb or my fingers and make um, lines with it. It's really not at all uh, hyper science. But it is kind of painterly actually, yeah. Now, some people have asked, what about outside? And because this is glass on copper, yes, the answer is a piece. Any of these pieces can be put outside if you uh, treat the black wood. Now, this is probably a reasonable place to show you. I attach the enamel piece, hold this up with a French cleat. Actually, it goes this way with the French cleat. And then on the wall, the client or the installer puts another piece and it meshes together. It's a real sturdy fit. So yes, it goes beautifully outside as well as, as indoors. So we have outside and then uh, there are a couple more. This was outside at a gallery in California. And this was outside at a home in near Scottsdale, Arizona. I call this one, uh, it was my homage to Cezanne, uh, Cliff Over the Sea. I like his better, don't tell him. <laughs> this, is one, this is one that I uh, put outside of my house. Um, yes, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Well, I, I do use, I enjoy using the, the round. Actually, a lot of people have liked the round. The largest I can get in my kill is a 12 inch round disc. And it's fun to work with a, a different shape as well. Let's see, we have a few questions. Irene, would you like to relay the questions to Cynthia? Sure, absolutely. We Thank have, um, do these reflect a sheen from an ambient light or do they look more matte? I'm wondering how best to light them is one of the they, they They shine. They shine. That's this, they sparkle. The, the surface is shiny and smooth and people like to touch it because it's shiny and cool and smooth. And somebody else says, we're from Cincinnati now, visiting my family, including 91-year-old father. I'm from Cincy. <laughs> and what type of firing schedule are you using? Ah, that's a good question. Firing schedules. Again, it is not rocket science. Uh, I've been told by the enamel expert that it's around three minutes per firing. I, on the other hand, have a little hole in the kill front. And when I see that the surface is clear and smooth, it's time to take it out. Also, I have a, um, I don't know what you call it, where we can read the temperature uh, inside of the kill. And is it as it approaches 1400 degrees, it's time to pull it out unless 
I want to do something um, extreme by experimenting, but it's generally around 1400, um, 1390, then I pull it out. I don't ever look at the clock. No. Thank you. And, and then one other question was, will the colors fade in the sun? Ah. The colors are permanent. And this is, this is why people like to put them outside because they do not fade. Glass will not fade like paint will. Here's a great example. <laughs> yeah. And this is one I asked, I had a, um, a gallery in Pennsylvania and I said, would you mind sending me that uh, sun? Yes, sun because I have put on, because I have no choice about. I'm sorry. That, that's all right. Um, go ahead, Cynthia. Someone okay. wasn't muted. The uh, gallery sent me this picture and that white stuff in front is snow. So, so it will put up not only with light, extreme light, but also extreme temperature. Yes, it will. Great. Yeah, it won't crack. It's fine with extreme temperature. Okay, this is a piece. This is the picture of a piece that I'm working with now for the University of Illinois, my alma mater. It's called, it's okay. called, that's okay. It's called Swan Nebula. And this picture was sent by my dear friend, Ed Kaufman. We exchange pictures back and forth and the image just hit me. I love the nebula pieces. It's, they're so fantastical. And what I did with that is translate that into a 12 panel piece. That was the first of the nebula that I did was a 12 panel piece. Then a client of mine came to me and said, you know, I really love this one nebula, but I've got this lobby, uh, condominium lobby in um, Minneapolis. Can you make it bigger? How big can you make it maybe, yeah, like 20 panels. And this is what I did for her. So that, um, yes, they can be, as you can tell, each one is different. The basic color scheme is the same. The basic uh, design composition is the same, but each piece is unique and intended to be so. So if somebody came to you with, with a picture of a scene, um, usually you work with skies, I believe, but if somebody came with a different type of scene, could you work with that? Of course, as I had mentioned that, that um, what was it, the cliff by the sea was from a picture uh, of Cezanne that I loved, my, my interpretation, my translation of Cezanne. So the answer is yes. And Duncan had said earlier, what if someone came to you with a picture of the sky from their wedding day as the most important day of their lives? Can you translate that? And the answer is, I sure as shooting would give it a real try mm -hmm. to come up with as close to that image as I could. And what is the largest individual panel that you can make? The, the largest? Individual panel. Uh, the make? largest individual panel, Irene, is 12 inches by 15 inches. And uh, that's what these compositions were. Uh, the piece that I'm working with the University of Illinois is 12 by 15 as well. The um, individual panels are 12 by 15. And, and how much would that, would one individual panel weigh? An indiv I haven't rate each one individually, but um, I would say less than a pound. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I use a 0 0.32 gauge copper. So if that gives any indication of what it might weigh from Diana, where will this piece, this piece is in the lobby of a condominium building in um, Minneapolis, Minnesota. 
And then a client said, I've got this fireplace and I like the swan, but what can you do for me above my fireplace? And this is what I came up with. These folks were in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And that was a fun thing to do. I needed to turn my head another way to see the, the composition. And then there was a client who came to me and said, what's the next one, Mary? Uh, yes, I need a smaller piece. What can you do for that? Actually, I think this one is at Ed and Adele's house now in Highland Park, Illinois. Hi, Ed. <laughs> and then the client from the children's hospital, the um, designers came to me and said, okay, the corporation likes your work and they have this Prince purple wall. We like this, this one. Can you translate that to a Prince purple wall? And this is what we did, what I did. So Cynthia, um, you obviously need to have very specific colors in a situation like this. Uh, where do you get the color? Is the color pre-mixed? Um, does it come in a bar like uh, colors that are used in the hot glass studio? Uh, the color comes either in lump form the, for the jewels or in a powder form. And I've been getting all my enamel from Thompson Enamel down in Kentucky, Pledge. Uh, and in terms of getting the specific color, I can do that with the transparent colors by having a thin layer, say this pink, is not quite, it's, it's a different color pink than comes in the jar. So I had a thin layer of the pink and on top of that, I put a thin layer of a red, very thin layer of red to deepen the pink so that it's not as pastel as it comes in the jar. Mm -hmm. And because there are so many layers that I do with each composition, there are very few colors that are straight out of the jar, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, this is what I'm working with the University of Illinois. As you see over on the left, they sent a diagram of where they want the art to be. And they asked for uh, two renditions of what they want to have. This was the first one that I offered them. A equals A, go from left to right. That's a 30 panel piece. What I had, the largest I had done before that had been 20 for uh, Minneapolis, but this is a 30 panel piece. And then going down the stairs, B and D are those renditions. Again, this is swan, obviously. And then across, there's a C. Now, they sort of liked that piece, but they came up with one, an, a, another idea. It's a combination, combination of uh, 12 people on the committee making the decisions. So that this was what I had at first offered them. And they said, no, 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 we want something broader than that. So I basically doubled what I had offered them. They took it to the finance committee who said, not a chance. And they said, this is what we can spend. What can you do us for? And this is what I came up with. It's a total of 29 panels. And uh, this will be, I'm just starting to work on this. The um, dedication, is um, October 1st. So I've got some time to put it together and that's what I'm gonna do. Congratulations. Thank uh, you so much. I'm really, really thrilled to be doing this. Irene, do we have other questions at this uh, point also? Not at this moment. Okay. Thanks, Irene. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Now, a designer, interior designer came to me and said, my client wants something 15 panels across. And I took, and she loves sunsets. Okay. So I made this sunset just for fun. I put it on so that it's, it's in a uh, reception area. This was a, a photo, Photoshop putting it together. But the piece itself went into their home, again, near me in Scottsdale. And as you can see, I, I did that because I think it's very clear that this, this medium is comfortable in a home, in a business setting, outdoors, in a hospital setting, because again, it's glass, it's easy to clean and to keep clean. And if there are people who are gonna run their fingers on it, it helps to be able to clean it. So well, this, this adds so much warmth to this room. It's really incredible. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, the designers are inclined to use a lot of neutral. Mm -hmm. So I figure they need some color in their lives. And of course, inspired by the Tucson sunsets, right? You have beautiful, beautiful sunsets there. Yeah. Sunsets, um, that's always been my, my number one love to watch sunsets, or especially if I can, to watch them over the lake. Like when we were in Michigan, we could watch the sunsets over the lake. Right. which was a joy. So what comes next? All right. This again is the piece that you had sent down to San Salvador and loaded with, loaded with jewels and lots of fun to do. Can you talk a little bit more about what these jewels are exactly and, and how, how big they are, how they're attached? Okay, well, you can see if this, if, if the middle panel, say panel number six, has a lot of jewels on it, it the, the jewels on this piece are simply clear lumps of enamel glass that I have put on there. And they're various sizes. Some of them are maybe the size of your pinky fingernail. And then they go smaller than that. And if they're too big and I want something smaller, I'll take a hammer to them, put them in a put them in a plastic bag and hammer to make them smaller. Have you ever considered uh, applying lenses, like small lenses, to the work? Applying what, dear? A lens, uh, like a clear lens, you know, that um, say a half of a disc. You know, um, if you laid a half of a clear disc on top of your panel and fired it, would it adhere? Say something an inch across. Um, that needs to be experimented with. Mm -hmm. And I am, I, I trust the enamel people to, to make uh, enamels and, and jewels that will stick. Um, someone actually gave me some windshield glass and I tried it on a, a couple of pieces and it doesn't look good. It just looks like a mess. So there's compatibility issues. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And to tell you the truth, I did not study the chemistry of it. So, um, it, it, it is a compatibility issue. The coefficient of expansion would be different. It would have to be the same base glass uh, you see, to be able to put in other elements. You, you see, you know all about that, Duncan. And I was a lazy thing, and I didn't study the chemistry. So, I, so you can't just, uh, it's not like uh, you don't just sprinkle something on top and then put it in the oven and it melts, like when you're baking. <laughs> Well, that's my on, level of experiment. If, <laughs> if, you, if you put sawdust into cupcake, uh, cupcakes, that's not going to turn out so well. That's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, 
so no, I've been getting I've been getting my my work from my enamels from Thompson, and they know what they're doing. They know the chemistry inside and out. And indeed, it's true. There, I, I have learned by trial and error that, uh, for example, the blues, the transparent blues, when they're fired, will become more and more transparent. Whereas a red transparent, if it's overfired, will black. It will burn out. So, mm -hmm. by trial and error, I've learned some of the chemistry on that. Okay, this is one of the beaches. I believe you have this, or if you don't have it, you have sold it. Um, we have this this piece. You, I know you've got this one, a nine nine panel beach, and again, my love of the water and the sky. Uh, so it's those are great fun to do, and lots of little jewels for. Um, indications of foam, if you will, on the water. The top is very much like watercolor, the way the, the colors are all blended. That's, that's a really, really brilliant point, Mary. I, I, in school, took a class in watercolor and loved it. And think of enameling in that way as well, because watercolor has layers in the same way that enameling has layers. The thing about watercolor is that it is totally unforgiving. And if you put something down that you don't want, there's very little you can do to remedy it. Whereas in enameling, there is more opportunity to finesse what you have in mind. That's actually the piece that sold today, so it's not available. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> That's great. What was that? That is the piece that uh, sold today, Danielle said. So congratulations. Oh, this is the one that was sold. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. I guess I'll have to do another one because you don't have another nine panel wave. That's beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for letting me know which one sold. Yeah, that was a favorite. Good. Okay. Now, beaches can be done as um, swans can be done in different sizes, different configurations, and they're all different. This is kind of a, this I think is has a, a, a nice feeling of the, the water. I like it anyway. So Cynthia, how do you get the, the edges of the waves there? You're using a brush to, yeah. to add the white uh, enamel? Exactly. Just brushing it? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And oh. So in one of the comments is beautiful pieces. It's like painting with glass. It's like what, dear? Like painting with glass. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I kind, of, I kind of think of it that way. Uh, this is a recent piece. Um, you know, during during COVID, we've we've all had our techniques of keeping our spirits up, and I just kept on working, so that I I call this one a new star is coming, and uh, it can fit very nicely above a six foot sofa. <laughs> And this, this was submitted and won a special notice at the Mesa Contemporary Art Museum. And when I went to the opening, I got such a kick to see that they had put it on this turquoise wall. I, I thought that was great fun on their part instead of just a plain white wall. And I've had work on their walls every year since I submitted about eight years or 10 years max ago. So I've been honored to have my work at the Mesa Contemporary Art Museum all those years. And this is a great example of uh, showing how strong the colors in your pieces are and how they hold up against other strong colors around them. Thank you, Mary. 
point well taken. Yeah. And this is this is a new piece. I call this a celebration. It's really very soft. And yet it's got some strength in the colors and the jewels of different colors. It's on my dining room wall, so it's available. Now, Cynthia, what exactly is enamel? Enamel is glass that has been pulverized into enamel powder. And some of the jewelers, for example, will take glass, enamel glass. Again, I don't know the chemistry, so I don't know what their, their um, formula is, but some of the, some of the um, jewelers will take pieces of glass and pulverize them themselves to make a, a very, very, very fine sand, which they use on jewelry and it's very, very beautiful. So other than the color, there's nothing else added to it. There's no metal added to the pulverized glass? No, the metal is, is the base, the base. it's not added. If, it, if, if it's in, I beg your pardon, some of the enamels come to me that have metal, components in them. And if I were to, to, to um, look up the chemistry, the red has and the yellow has gold in it. Okay. For example. Okay. Now somebody I saw at the bottom of the screen, a question started to pop up, but I don't see the question now. So powder glass, somebody's asking, or something's added to it, you're, and you were going over that. And then also, how close is glass powder to frit? Hmm. Same thing. Glass powder and frit are the same thing. Frit is simply lumpier glass powder. Does that make sense? Yes, and that was the other question too as well. Is there a difference between enamel powder and frit? No, it's just a different name. Thank you. Can you use uh, enamel powder on something other than copper? I have tried, yes. Um, our jewelers use gold or silver and make beautiful work with, with the gold and silver and enamel. And somebody, okay, I've got a sign here. Some works well on stainless steel. That is a whole nother ball game of taking like the top of a dryer, of a washer dryer, take the top of a dryer, which has opaque white that has been um, fired or annealed to the, to the metal, the stainless steel. And then you can use enamel on top of that. The reason, one of the reasons I don't use it, haven't used it to date, is that the colors that are put on top will be, will come through as opaque. And I like to use some transparencies as well. So I've, I've been sticking with, uh, with metal, with copper, and not having that solid white background that the um, stainless steel would have. Oh, thank you. That's Certainly. really interesting. Sure. Um, let's see. I believe that that's the end of our slides, but I know that we have a few more comments. Let's see. Um, let me stop sharing here. Oh, no, we have some more. Okay. This is an unusual uh, layout for you. It is, I call this darkness falls. And you had asked, had asked earlier, Mary, the little, the yellow dots are fireflies coming out. Mm -hmm. 
and the blue coming down darkness falls from the wings of night with the stars coming out. Beautiful. And this is a um, three little three pieces of copper enamel that are mounted onto a black acrylic board. Okay, oh yes. A uh, client sent me an image of a nebula and she said, what can you do with this? <laughs> and this, this is the image that I came up with. Uh, happy fourth is what I call it. And is this mounted on a uh, black acrylic as well? This is also on the acrylic, yeah. For the smaller, the smaller compositions, I've started mounting them on the black acrylic. I think it gives them a base that just hanging them, uh, hanging them on the wall doesn't quite capture. Mm -hmm. Gives them a little solidity. This is early spring, quiet piece with a transition from fall and winter dark into spring with uh, yellow, yellow jewels, again, on black acrylic. This is um, Happy Spring. Is that what we called it, Mary? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, again, uh, this is a combination with the white that I've taken taken the paintbrush to, and then um, an ultramarine blue, transparent on top of that, and the clear jewels to show through. And this one, I've, I've got this, this up in my hallway, and it looks better in the hall than it does on this picture, I'm afraid. But I did take little stencils and put them on the pieces of copper to give a, a sense of depth and pattern. And I call this uh, champagne trio, mm -hmm. also in black. This is new spring. I did this this winter. And we see the dark of winter being overcome by the optimism of spring, the peachy colors and yellows coming through the bright blue of the sky. You can make up a story, I think, on most any one of these, if you wish. Mm -hmm. But I did it this winter to cheer myself up. Wave. This is a 12-inch disc. And it's my homage to that very, very famous Japanese print. Again, a simple composition, some opaque white and jewels, goes inside and outside. Another wave, this is a four panel composition, similar composition, different feel, different size. You should have some of these, these might be good down in Florida for you, you know? We get lots of waves down in Florida. Okay, and then there's a nine panel piece. This was again at, in Mesa a few years ago, uh, that homage to that marvelous print, that Japanese print. Is, and then again, celebration. Celebration of life, celebration of nature, celebration of being able to breathe and walk and go and come. And again, my thanks to you, Mary, and to you, Duncan, and to my helpers, Irene and Daryl. And there are and a few more the questions. People. Yeah. Hey, so just to clarify for an non-artist to get the fluidity from the dry powdered glass, is that all from the heat of the kiln causing the glass to melt? Um, that, Irene, is an overlay of one color over the edge of another color. 
which gives a transition of, um, of from one color to the next. Like in the number two panel, where I have the white, and then it goes into the pink and to, into the orange. Those are overlays in different, um, different firings. Does that explain it? Well, it doesn't. A question from Carolyn. Um, so I'm not sure if that's clear to her, um, but probably. And then the heat gets it all set in like that. So you get it to move the way that you want, and then the heat solidifies it the way that. You Yes, the heat, the heat so puts it and keeps it in place. Exactly. And if I'm not happy with that layer, I'll put some more on top of it to, um, to help. Oh, now we're getting into the process. Did we do this? Well, well I, I just pulled it up um, to help with that, that question. Um, you know, to show that you layered the color and then fired and then layered some more. Yeah, yeah. I just did that. Some more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. And that's, that's what happens with, with all of the compositions. Thank you. And then getting back to the installation at University of Illinois, somebody who works there looks forward to seeing it there. And where exactly will that be installed? I know you those are going to be at the Talbot okay. Laboratory building. OK, great. She'll look forward to seeing it there. Thank you. Thank and you. Your work yeah. is absolutely amazing. Our other comments, very stunning. And yes, we will have a link to the recording. So oh, thank it's you. on YouTube page uh, by the end of next week, usually. And there's okay. also a link to the catalog um, somewhere in the chat. I know Danielle put it in early on, so probably at the very top of yep. the chat. If anyone wants to peruse the, the images more, and uh, you know, enjoy them. Af uh, you can copy the link now and then um, enjoy the pieces further. That's great. Thank you or so very much. Enjoy the person here. We're open now Sundays as well. Oh, yeah. thank you. Marie. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's well, Cynthia, really that was so uh, interesting and so amazing. And um, I know I learned a lot and I, I assume everyone else did as well. And we understand uh, you and your work so much better. And I certainly appreciate the opportunity to, to talk about it with you. As you can imagine, I'm in my studio in the garage, door open year round, facing north, lucky me. And I talk to myself quietly. So it's wonderful to be able to converse with, with all of you in Zoom time here. And if you have any questions, of course, I'm very happy to answer them. Start a dialogue, email, call, whatever works for you is fine with me. Or call Mary or Duncan or Irene, and they probably know more than I do. <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you, very Mary. much. Thank you, Cynthia. This was wonderful. Um, it was great to see all the work, and uh, we look forward to having people come see it in person. So thank, thank you. you very much for today. Thank you. And thanks for selling that nine panel piece. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> thanks everyone for joining us. Okay. Take Thank care. You. Bye bye. Take care. Happy Friday. Thank Happy you. Friday.